I've come this morning to a pond that I've never fished before. Um, it's a really small water and I've come here for one reason. Uh, I understand there's a few crucian carp here. Um, and being spring and crucian carp being a classic kind of spring and summer fish, I thought I'd come and give it a go. Uh, I've never fished here before. I had a walk around a couple of months ago just to kind of get a feel for the place and work out where it was, meet the owner. Um, and he assures me there are some crucian carp in here, so we're in the right place. Um, I did notice quite a lot of um, common carp mirror carp, so king carp when I was here, um, and crucian carp and king carp do crossbreed quite a lot, uh, which causes hybrids. Um, so I'm not sure if they're going to be purebreds, seems probably unlikely, but we're going to give things a go. We're going to fish for it in a classic way that we will be crucian carp. So we're going to go float fishing. Uh, I've got my centre pin, and uh, we're going to, as you'll often hear people say when they go crucian carp fishing, dot the float right down. They're renowned for being really shy biters. Um, so we're going to use a fine float, uh, dot it right down in the water after carefully plumbing the depth, and uh, we'll give it a go. It's a really lovely, lovely spring morning. I'm feeling confident. Let's try it. Okay, so I'm ready to get started. I've taken 10, 15 minutes to plumb the depth really, really carefully, and I can't stress how important that is. Um, I see lots and lots of anglers starting fishing without bothering to plumb the depth really know exactly what's in front of them with regards to the bottom shape. Um, so right under my feet it's very very shallow, there's barely 18 inches of water um, and if you go a rod length out it hasn't really increased but about a rod length and a half out there's a real little step in the bottom as you, and you can imagine as they were digging the lake out that's the sort of feature it would create with a, a digger arm scooping in and out the bottom. So that little bottom of the shelf is where I'm going to fish and I've plumbed the depth so that the bait is going to be sat just touching the bottom. Um, there's no wind whatsoever so it should sit really nice and still. Uh, I've got a bit of a feature next to me here, I've got a nice big bush to fish next to and the shelf kind of drops away just off the end of that bush. So I've got some near side marginal cover, I've got a rapid change in depth, um, nice calm conditions, very easy to fish too, it's just a, a rod length and a half away. I'm going to fish with some sweet corn. Uh, I'm going to fish with some pellets and uh, we'll give it a go. The sun's just coming up. Why wouldn't you want to go fishing today? You love it when the plan comes together. Two minutes, and we got ourselves a cruise and carp. Excellent. So there's a number of distinguishing features on the cruise and carp that separates it out from the regular king carp and what could easily look like a small common carp or a brown goldfish. The first is the absence around the mouth of any barbels whatsoever. You'll see on, on most carp two or well actually four long barbels um, hanging from the end of hanging from the sides of its mouth. Um, and this one has none, so that's the first good start. Then we get the colour, it's kind of that classic bronzy colour. Um, it's very rounded in its shape, although this one looks a little bit elongated, so I suggest or suspect it might be slightly hybridised. Um, nice rounded fin, um, and one, then one of the uh, top things that they do when they're checking for sort of a British record claim would be the number of um, rays along the dorsal fin. And I think it's about 13 to 18 that they count, but don't quote me on that number. So uh, yeah, first cast, and we've got ourselves a little cruising car. Perfect. 